Hello students, myself Professor Ankur. I welcome everyone for the gate sum session in analog circuits. We are going to start with MOSFET sums. Let's start with now part 3 of the MOSFET sums. So let's go for the question. So this is from the gate 2017 EC paper. The question has come for two marks. Let's have a look at the question. The question says for the circuitry shown, the NMOS transistor is in saturation. If the threshold voltage VTN is one volt and its transconductance parameter mu n C ox W by L equal to one milliampere per volt square, neglect channel length modulation and body bias effects under these conditions the drain current id in milliampere is so if you observe the circuitry we need to find the drain current this question is basically on the potential divider bias circuitry of mosfet so the first thing is we need to find the thevenin's equivalent voltage so the thevenin's equivalent voltage will be vdd into r2 divided by r1 plus r2 so it will be 8 into 5 divided by 8 it will give me 5 volts so the value of vg which is going to be your vth it will give me 5 volts by definition vgs for a potential divider bias is vg minus vs so vg is going to be the threshold value uh, vg is going to be the thevenin's value and vs is going to be id into rs so the value of vg which is going to be my Thevenin's equivalent voltage, which is 5 volt. So the value of VGS will be 5 volt minus ID and the RS value is 1K. So it is 1000. So we are going to use the equation. ID is equal to mu C ox W by L VGS minus VT the whole square and the whole thing gets divided by 2. So when I substitute in the equation of ID, I'll get 0.5 into 1 milli bracket 5 minus id into 1000 minus 1 the whole square solving this you will get two values of id one is 8 milliampere other one is 2 milliampere and we always go for the lower value so the id value is 2 milliampere so the correct answer is id is 2 milliampere next question is from the gate 2016 ece paper so we are having a question in the circuitry shown in the figure the channel length modulation of all the transistors is non-zero that is lambda is non-zero whenever they say that whenever the lambda is non-zero implies we do have the output resistance of the mosfet measured between the drain and the source also all transistors operate in saturation and have negligible body effect the ac small signal voltage gain vo by v in in the circuitry is so if you observe carefully, we are having three MOSFETs, MOSFET 1, 2 and 3, where input is given to the first MOSFET and the output is taken from drain. And when I go for the AC equivalent, the VDD battery point will work like ground. The MOSFET 3 gate terminal will be also getting shorted to ground because it's a DC battery and for AC it will get shorted. So if you observe carefully, I can easily say that MOSFET 2 and MOSFET 3 are actually working like a load for the first MOSFET. So when I go for the equivalent, I can see first MOSFET. So for the first MOSFET, I can see carefully input and then at the drain end, I am having output resistance RO1 and then for MOSFET 2 and MOSFET 3. For MOSFET 2, the output is basically connected to the source terminal. So the impedance value will be measured between source and ground for the second MOSFET and that's the reason the impedance value equivalent will be RO2 parallel 1 by GM2 and when I go for the third MOSFET the third MOSFET is between drain and ground so it is as good as the drain and source so that impedance will automatically become equal to RO3 I'll repeat what has happened when I go for the equivalent calculation for the first MOSFET which is going to be my input for the gate terminal and output from the drain terminal we have an impedance ro1 and for mosfet 2 and mosfet 3 which are actually working like a load for the first mosfet since mosfet 2 is having source connected to the output terminal and the drain terminal is grounded so the impedance between vo and ground 
is going to be for MOSFET to as good as between source and ground. So between source and ground, the impedance is always RO2 parallel 1 by GM2 for second MOSFET. And when we talk about the third MOSFET, it is between the drain and the ground. So it will be equal to RO3. So when I find the value of AB, the value is going to be VO by VI. So the output voltage is going to be GM VGS into RO1 parallel RO2 parallel 1 by GM2 parallel 1 by GM3 with a minus sign. And then the input Vn is going to be equal to VGS1. So the VGS VGS gets cancelled and we are left out with the value of AV as minus of GM1 parallel RO1 parallel RO2 parallel 1 by GM2 parallel RO3. So the correct answer is option C. This question is from the gate 2015 paper. Let's have a look at the question. The question says in the circuitry shown the enhancement mode NMOS transistors have the following characteristics KN mu C ox W by L equal to 1 milliampere per volt square VTN is equal to 1 volt assume that the channel length modulation parameter lambda is 0 and body is shorted to source the minimum supply voltage VDD needed to ensure that MOSFET 1 operates in saturation mode of operation is. So if you observe the diagram carefully, you can see two MOSFETs, MOSFET 1 and MOSFET 2. For MOSFET 2, we have to check the condition and for MOSFET 1, we have to check the condition. MOSFET 2, if you observe the drain and the source and the gate terminals, the drain potential is basically VDD. The gate potential is going to be now equal to the drain potential because of the short circuit. So you will find for MOSFET 2, the value of VD will be greater than VG minus VT always. So this will ensure that MOSFET 2 is in saturation. For MOSFET 1 to be in saturation, I have to ensure that the VD is greater than VG minus VT. For MOSFET 1, the value of VG is 2 volt. That is as good as my VGS. So the first step is we will try to find out the current value of MOSFET 1. So here I can use the equation ID is equal to mu C ox W by L VGS minus VT the whole square. The entire thing gets divided by 2. So we are aware that MOSFET 1 has to work in saturation. So if the MOSFET 1 has to work in saturation, the VD has to be greater than VG minus VT. So for that, the VG value is already given as 2 volt. The VT value is already 1 volt. So VG minus VT will be 2 minus 1. That will be 1. So the VD has to be greater than 1. So this is the required condition for MOSFET 1. I can find the equation for drain current. The drain current is going to be half mu C ox W by L VGS minus VT the whole square. So the value is going to be 0.5 1 milliampere bracket VGS that is 2 minus 1 the whole square. So solving you will get 0.5 milliampere. Whatever is the current of MOSFET 1 same is the current for MOSFET 2. So that's the reason you are using the condition. Drain current of both the MOSFETs being same. You are using the condition for MOSFET 1 equal to MOSFET 2. So MOSFET 2 drain current will be 0.5 milliampere. And using the formula, we are going to substitute the remaining terms. Now 0.5 milliampere is going to be equal to half W by L mu C ox will be taken as 1 milli. So it is 0.5 into 1 milli bracket VGS, which is VG minus VS. So VS is basically the voltage of the drain for the first MOSFET. But since the first MOSFET has to operate in saturation, the drain value has to be greater than 1. And we are going for a minimum requirement. So we are taking it as 1. So the value of VG, which is equal to VDD. So it is going to be VDD minus VD. The threshold value is 1. So we are putting VDD minus VD minus 1, the whole square. So if you solve, you will get the value of VDD. When VD value is taken as 1, you will get it as 3 volt. So the minimum supply voltage VDD has to be 3 volt.